Hi, my name's Dan Keane. I'm a composer, producer, and musician based in London. And I've just bought the new 2021 MacBook Pro. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about what configuration I went for and what has convinced me that this will be a sound investment for the future. In case you've been living under a rock, Apple has just unveiled their new and improved MacBook Pro lineup with two sizes, 14 inches and 16 inches, and two new chips, M1 Pro and M1 Max. And both boast incredible Geekbench scores and whoever created those ambiguous graphs for the keynote was very busy. But what this translates to in the real world is machines that can handle a lot more while while still maintaining excellent battery life and minimizing fan noise due to a new and improved design. I think it's safe to say that pros don't mind function over aesthetics. In fact, I think we probably prefer that, so you'll notice it's considerably thicker than previous generations for better cooling and a bigger battery. And it's got a lot more ports because pros need ports. In my view, this is the first pro-feeling MacBook Pro since my 2015 one, and you may notice some similarities. No touch bar, lots of ports, beautiful key travel, MagSafe. I think Apple has actually been listening to what consumers want, and from what I've seen from the early reviews so far, I'm really, really impressed. Now, I've made videos about the M1 lineup in the past. My last video about the M1 Mac Mini nearly a year ago, I said that I thought it would take about two years for plugin manufacturers and sample library developers to optimize their products for this new architecture, and I still believe that to be true. Companies like FabFilter have been great, have been fab, and they've optimized for the architecture to support natively already. Other companies have been quite slow, but I have actually been pleasantly surprised by the Rosetta 2 emulation. It's maybe not quite as good as Intel, but it's pretty much there. I think we're getting to a point now where compatibility with the Apple Silicon chips is gonna be accelerated massively by this wave of Pro users upgrading to the 2021 MacBook Pro. A lot of my friends are also upgrading as well, and I think this will encourage companies to get on it a lot more quickly. But also, as a Logic and Final Cut Pro user, because the applications are natively supported anyway, I am confident that the apps and the plugins that I use every day will feel significantly faster and more efficient than my Intel machines. To be honest, I never really thought the M1 machine was designed for Pro users in mind. You could only configure up to 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and there was a really strange choice of devices iPad Pro, 13-inch MacBook Air, 13-inch MacBook Pro, and the smaller 24-inch iMac. I figured that something bigger and better was coming, and M1 Pro and Max appears to be that next step. Now you can configure your Macs with up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory, up to 32 cores on your GPU, even up to eight terabytes of storage, and Admittedly, it's not user upgradable still, and I think that ship has sailed, at least for now, so you really have to be careful with what device you're going to buy at the time. Prices have taken a slight increase too, with baseline M1 Pros starting at around $2,000, so that's up by about 800 from the baseline M1 machines. And they do quickly increase in value if you start to spec out with any significant upgrades. Now, my Intel Mac Mini has been absolutely fantastic for music production so far. It's fully specced, it's got 64 gigabytes of RAM, and that's more than enough for what I need for my day-to-day -day projects. I'd say with bigger orchestral projects, my RAM in Activity Monitor for Logic kind of tops out at around 30 gigabytes, so that's plenty of headroom for me. The one thing that it hasn't got is graphical performance. And you may have noticed that I've started to film these videos in 4K, but even just streaming my Mac through a single 4K monitor, it's increasing the CPU by quite a bit. And this means I have to increase my buffer size to 512 or even 1024, which leads to a less than ideal latency. With a 1080p monitor, it's absolutely fine, but for filming the screen capture for these videos and for the work that I do for Spitfire Audio, it creates a little bit of a bottleneck. Now, I could opt to buy a Blackmagic eGPU, and they're about $800, but unfortunately, not only are they not compatible with the new M1 machines, but I've also heard mixed reviews online, so it doesn't really feel like a sound investment. Now, strangely enough, every musical opportunity I've had since I started this YouTube channel has come because of the YouTube channel. I recently did some arrangements for Gary Barlow's Christmas album. That came because he saw one of my videos, and the same with Spitfire Audio as well. They were interested in me because of my video for piano book. While video production might seem like a strange reason to upgrade, for the longevity of not only this channel, but for my career as well, 
I think it's a really sound investment for me. The other thing is just portability, being able to run an insanely powerful rig without needing an external monitor or even a power socket is extremely exciting for what I hope will be a much more mobile 2022 post pandemic. So for me being able to sit at a coffee shop or take it to a client or even record remotely, that's really exciting to have all that power packed into a portable machine. So what configuration have I gone for? Well, in the interests of portability, I decided to opt for the 14 inch model, which I thought would be more than enough screen real estate for me to work remotely. And if I'm ever needing to use something bigger at a desk, wherever I'm gonna be, whether that's Spitfire or here, I'm always gonna have a 4K monitor to plug into. Some people have asked me about the fans. The fans seem to be quite large on the 14 inch, and I guess only time will tell how that throttles performance. I believe the fan noise is significantly quieter because of this new design than the previous models. So even when the fans are working at full speed, I don't think that's actually going to make too much of an impact for us, I say, sitting in a room that sounds like a greenhouse right now because it's raining so hard outside. I think the 16 inch would be absolutely fantastic, but as I say, to be able to throw this gently into a bag and take this with me anywhere, I think is a really important thing. So the 14 inch seems to be good enough for me. And in the interest of future proofing, I decided to upgrade to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. I just didn't understand how 16 gigabytes would be enough for people working on massive projects. So to have 64, exactly the same as I've got on my Intel Mac mini, that makes me feel safe. And so the 64 gigabytes of unified memory automatically puts you in the M1 Max category. So I've gone for the lower tier 24 core GPU. And that comes out to $3,499 or 3,399 pounds. Now I know that's a lot of money, it really is. Um, but I do strongly believe that that will be enough for us musicians for a few years. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to continue using my Intel Mac Mini. I may find that I have issues with compatibility with Monterey. Is that the new OS? I think it is. Um, but also I'm gonna use it as a really great at home machine. If you've got any questions for me for this full review, please do leave them in the comments down below. As I say, I'll return to this in the new year with a full review for music producers because I think these days, these machines, they're being optimized for graphics designers, for animators, for filmmakers. And for us musicians, we don't need as much headroom as they're providing. So I'm hoping that this new 14 inch MacBook Pro is gonna be a one-stop shop for me. And I can just plug this into my system here, take it home with me, plug it into my home system or take it to a coffee shop and be one of those people who's composing in Starbucks. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you again very, very soon.